Chaos, questions of who's in charge. Is the king of Spain really in charge, or is Napoleon's brother's cousin's uncle in charge? We're not sure, but we do know that we're going to use that as an excuse for revolt. <clears throat> okay. Um, next, another area of similarity or, or difference, probably largely difference, would be the role of social class. Um, the first point there talks about how Americans were far more unified as far as class conflict. We don't see very many examples of, of social class resulting into large-scale <laughs> tensions or all-out warfare. It doesn't really happen in, in the United States. Um, however, in the Spanish colonies, um, we do see a complete lack of unity between these groups. And who's missing from this picture? There's somebody else. Mestizos, mulattoes, natives. We'll lump them all together as the lower class. Okay? <coughs> and I guess the point that I'm trying to get to is if we're talking about goals, what we want, we're a lot more unified here because this is the goal. Protection of property, uh, that, that they have protection of property and representation. But that's largely the goal here. But over here, we see uh, 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 diverse goals. The Peninsulares, let's keep it the same. What are you complaining about? Let's deal with it. Oh, I'm sorry you were born in the smelly new world. Cope with it. Maybe in the next life. Oh, there's no next life? Okay, deal with it. Creoles, on the other hand, are their goals are very different. What do the Creoles, what would they like to see happen? Yes? Land reform. No, they don't want land reform. They're the ones that own all the land. The lower class are in favor of land reform. Yeah, they want the power. They want prestige. They want to be in charge. They want to be the peninsulares. They want to keep the social structure to be the same. And so the story over goals is the lower class wants better conditions, better working conditions. They want land reform. Do, they, do the Creoles who have all the land, do they, are they interested in land reform? No, because it hurts them. No. <laughs> Maybe some. It all doesn't count. Okay? But, uh, so these two groups, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible for them to pull together because <coughs> they don't have the same goals. They don't have the same vision of where this country is going to go. Oh, and, and then I bolded it. Bolded? Bolded? It's in bold. Key point, the goals of the Creoles and lower class are mutually, mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, which leads us to types of revolt. In Latin American nations, we see two types of, two types of revolts. One led by these people, and one led by the lower class. A revolt. There we go. So, revolts that were elite, and revolts that were mainly the masses. So someone give me an example of somebody that cared about all their people being equal. No one should be enslaved. Everyone should be equal. <coughs> give, someone give me an example of a leader that cared about all people being equal. No one should be enslaved. Toussaint Louverture would be an example of someone over here. Because he was the best. Because he was the best. You could also argue Hidalgo. Okay, he didn't succeed, but hey, he tried, right? <laughs> and all go. Head on the bike and everything. Okay? Over here, under elite revolts, we see pretty much the rest of them. Simon Bolivar. <laughs> coming out of the grave. Martin. Uh, Dom Pedro. <coughs> okay. <laughs> key, key difference, um, we don't have different types of revolts over there. 
it's, it's kind of they're together, working together to try and overthrow. Whereas over here, we have different forms of revolt. Even in Mexico itself, we start out with Hidalgo, and then they end up <coughs> with Iturbide. And that worked out great. <laughs> Um, I have a section on role of leadership that you can look over. <coughs> I'm not sure if it's, if, if it's all that um, useful. And then I have a section on, on the Declaration of Independence that, that I'd like to go over a little bit. And a lot of the Declaration of Independence is centered around this. This is not working. We, we're being taxed and we don't have representation. So the way that the Declaration of Independence is broken up, it has three parts to it. <coughs> the first part is the um, ideological basis. Okay, raw, equal. Um, and, and like we said, or one of the other kind of master narratives or master stories that we've talked about as far as the U.S. is concerned is Declaration of Independence we're going to see different groups point back to this. And if you have that story linking it together, like if you're talking about civil rights and in your conclusion you want to like, you know, pull this all together and point back that, you know, Gordon S. Wood talked about how, how the Declaration of Independence was, a, uh, was radical because it allowed for other groups to point back to and say, you owe me equality. And that's the kind of story that it shows you get the big story and you can fill in the blanks between it. So ideological basis, other groups are going to point to that. Women, minority groups, handicapped people, Martian. Um, the next part of the Declaration of Independence is the list of grievances. You did this. Grievance, all this stuff there. And then lastly is the legal part where it says we are officially separated and we are uh, our own country. So um, I, 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 I think I told you, talked to this about, about this as a love letter um, that's, uh, that's, you know, you screwed up on all this stuff, so don't call us, you know, we're, we're officially separated. We are, we are officially a separate country. So, but all of this ties back into the ideas about law, about property, um, taxation, and representation. Okay. Last two sections. If you did Brazil, um, then, then we'll go over this kind of quickly. Um, and, and then Toussaint Louverture. But if you didn't, then don't, you know, if, if you don't know anything about Toussaint Louverture, then you probably shouldn't. Like, seriously, because this is testing what you know. And if you, do, if you didn't learn about it, like, it wasn't your focus, then don't do it, because it's probably going to turn out badly. Um, key difference between Brazil and other movements of independence is that it's largely bloodless, um, that, uh, that issues of legitimacy are not going to be a problem for Brazil after the fact, <coughs> because they have a king that, 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 that was still there. He stayed and then elevated status, and they became their, their own independent nation. <coughs> um, Haiti is different for, for numerous reasons many of which might make you think that it's uh, the greatest revolution, but um, we see that um, it's a slave uprising that ultimately was uh, ultimately successful, which makes it completely distinct. Um, and there's also a huge class dimension to this because the slaves fought not only the whites, French, but also their mixed race overseers. So it was to get rid of this entire system, both class, race, so... And, and, uh, social and class issues were all overthrown. Um, lots of bloodshed, 500,000 killed, which is a big difference between Brazil. All right. But hey, it didn't work out so well because they just went back to doing plantation agriculture and stripped, uh, let's see. Remember that, I, do, you, do you remember reading, uh, listening to the thing about Haiti, the floods and hurricanes yeah. last year? Uh, almost a year to the day the, the earthquake hit and I was like, oh my gosh, Haiti is cursed, seriously. So, um, so that's movements of independence. 
Um, the, 